As someone who's currently going through the process of online dating, I've had my fair share of ups and downs while using the dating apps. I've been ghosted, I've had things fall apart, and I've had flings end while in the search for a long-term partner. Now, I'm not alone in this journey. According to data from Statista, there are 60 million people in the United States alone who are on the dating apps. Now, through those experiences, I have picked up some knowledge on what does and doesn't work when it comes to online dating. So in this video, I wanted to share with you some tips that could potentially help you in finding your long-term partner. Before we get into what to do, we have to understand why dating apps. I know so many people in my personal life who personally don't like to use the dating apps because they feel like it's not an authentic way to meet people. But the reality is, is that if you're single, the dating apps provide the easiest way to meet new people to potentially go on dates with. Studies from the Pew Research show that 42% of US adults said dating apps make the search for a long-term partner easier and one in 10 partnered adults, meaning those who are living together in a long-term relationship or married said they met their partner through online dating. Now, another big fear people tend to have is not wanting their love origin story starting off with the dating apps. Now that is a reasonable fear to have, but if you look at the reality of the situation, if you end up meeting or marrying your long-term partner or meeting them, are you really gonna care that you met them through the dating apps? The answer is probably no, because you're just gonna be happy that you ended up finding that one person for you. Now begins the signing up process. Now that we've answered the why, you now need to pick a dating app to sign up for. Now there are tons of options to pick from, but the one that I've had the most success with in terms of getting dates and meeting quality women is Hinge. And Hinge is also considered the go-to app if you are serious about looking for a long-term partner. Now there are apps such as Tinder and Bumble, but I haven't had much success on those and Tinder especially is more geared towards the hookup scene. So if you're into that, by all means, go for it. Now you also have apps that are geared towards certain ethnicities for example, I'm Indian, so popular apps such as Dilmil and Mirchi are great to use for that case. Once you've picked an app, you now need to select photos. Now the general rule here is you wanna select high quality photos that showcase who you are and some of the activities you like to do. And you also wanna include at least one to two group photos of you hanging out with your friends. Now in those group photos, you wanna have at least one to two people in it and no more than that. Because the more people you include, the more chances the person scrolling your profile is going to be confused on who you are. Now in those group photos, you also wanna refrain from including people from the opposite sex. Speaking from a man's perspective, when a woman is scrolling your profile, she will not know if that person is your ex, best friend, or your sister. The Match Lab actually dropped an article last year showcasing some general best practices when it comes to selecting photos for online dating. Now, if you don't have great photos to choose from, which is sadly the case for most guys, you can ask a friend to shoot photos of you on your phone, or you can hire a photographer in your area. Trust me, the $120 to $200 you might spend hiring a local photographer who can pose you correctly and shoot you with good lighting can make a drastic change on how many likes you can get on these dating apps. Now, some of the most liked photos on my account have been this candid photo of me laughing on the beach, this full body pic of me in a suit, and this pic of me playing soccer with my friends. Now, when it comes to setting up filters for these dating apps, I would keep them as high level as possible. For example, if you're someone who doesn't drink and you know you want a partner that doesn't do that as well, you can go ahead and set up that filter. But for the most part, I would aim to keep them as high level as possible because the more filters you have, the more restrictive and the smaller you're making the potential dating pool. Picking prompts. Now that you've selected some great photos, you now need to go about selecting prompts for your profile. I'll admit that this is something I tend to struggle with because I don't consider myself to be a very witty person. But the general rule of thumb here is that you wanna select prompts that will entice someone to click on your profile. You can do that by providing specific and good details when it comes to your prompt. For example, instead of saying my ideal Sunday is brunch, movies, and a walk, you could then say my ideal Sunday is getting bottomless mimosas at my favorite brunch spot, watching House of the Dragons with my favorite Game of Thrones mug. In 2023, Hinge actually released their top 25 most used prompts on their app that get the most engagement. I would use these prompts as a way to showcase your personality and some of the fun, quirky things about yourself. I'd also advise against saying things that are so cliche and overused. Saying things such as, I won't shut up about The Office. Even though we all love The Office, just know that it's so overused. Instead, I would take this time to really think deeper about some of the interests that are unique to you. Logan Yuri, Hinge's director of relationship science and author of How Not to Die Alone said this about prompts. These prompts help you give someone a sense of what it would be like to date you by painting a picture of who you are and what brings you joy. Telling someone your specific quirks or pleasures can help create a vivid image of who you are and help them picture what a relationship with you would be like. Take the time to make these statements unique to you. Engaging with the app. 
Now that you've set up your profile, you're now ready to start swiping to potentially meet new people. But before you start doing that, take out your journal or a pen or a piece of paper or potentially your phone and write down in exact detail the type of person and relationship you're looking for. In all the relationship books I've read, the number one thing they all say in order to t find your long-term partner is that you need to be very clear on what you are looking for. If you're not very clear, it's very easy to start mindlessly swiping and potentially be with someone that you know isn't a long-term fit for you. Now, one of the great things about Hinge is that while it is also based off attractiveness, you also have the opportunity to have your personality shine by replying back to people's prompts with your own personal story. Now, one of the ways I like doing that is by when I look at someone's profile and I see an exotic picture or an exotic background in one of their profile pictures, I will simply comment something along the lines of, oh my God, is that Barcelona with an exclamation and uh, question mark. And that little comment is enough to get someone to usually comment back along with something with, no, haha, that's actually Hawaii. And it's just an easy way to start the conversation. Another thing you wanna keep note of while you're liking profiles on these dating apps is you want to ditch the prom date. Now, what do I mean by ditching the prom date? Well, this is another term coined by Logan Yuri in her book, How Not to Die Alone. Now, when it comes to people that use the dating apps, a lot of times we are often looking for the most attractive person with the highest qualifications and in attempt to showcase that person on social media to our friends or to our family. But when you're doing that, you're actually just replicating what you would do when you would take out a prom date. When you're looking for a prom date, you're looking for someone that has all these amazing physical characteristics or all these outward achievements. But in all the relationship books I've read and in my personal experience, when it comes to a long lasting relationship, it's actually more based on the personality and how well you mesh with someone compatibility wise rather than the looks they provide. So when you're looking for someone on these dating apps, you want to ditch the prom date and you instead want to look for long-term compatibility. How well do you handle arguments with that person? How well do you handle conflict? How well do your morals and values align? A lot of times you do not see this immediately when it comes to the dating app prompts and profiles we see. The match. Once you start matching with someone on the dating app, you want to go ahead and start messaging them and you want to strike that balance of being playful and flirty at the same time. Now, when it comes to general rules or best practices when it comes to messaging people on the dating apps, you want to avoid getting into long drawn out conversations through texting. Your goal here is that you want to set up the first date as soon as possible whenever you feel like the timing is right. For me, this all depends on the type of woman I'm texting and really what I found is after five or six rounds of messaging back and forth, I find that's usually the perfect time to go ahead and hit him with the line of, hey, I'd like to continue this conversation in person. When are you free to get together this week? And I'll leave them my number and that usually provides a decent segue into actually meeting them for a first date. Now, if you're struggling being flirty through text, don't worry. I find find that just showing genuine interest in what the person has to do and what their hobbies are is more than enough to kind of find that mutual attraction to start to build. Now, where you go for the first date depends on you and the person, but I'd like to generally stray away from things such as movies or going for hikes. The hiking is more so a safety concern for the woman and the movies is because you can't really get to know someone if you're watching a screen for two and a half hours. So I generally like to go for things such as coffee or grabbing drinks. When you're on these dates is you want to avoid it sounding like an interview. And one of the ways I combat that is by choosing to sit next to the person rather than from across from them. When you sit across from someone, it comes off very job interview-like, but when you sit next to someone, it gives off the opportunity to have playful touch on both sides. And it generally is just more comfortable to talk to someone when you're not directly facing them 100% all the time. You also want to be mindful on the days you are setting up these dates. For example, are you setting them up on a Thursday night or on a Sunday morning? Both of those dates will actually have drastically different energy levels, both from you and your date. Another great first date idea tip is that you want to potentially map out two or three additional spots that you could go to after you're done hanging out in your first spot. This gives off the illusion that you've been on multiple dates with this person when in reality, if you've only been on one date. Let's say for example, you decided to have a coffee date, you could grab the coffee, then choose to go walk around your downtown area and explore all the unique shops that your area has to have with your date. After the date, once the date is done, one of the things I like to do is ask myself the post-date eight. Now the post-date eight is a series of questions from Logan Yuri's book, How Not to Die Alone, and it essentially gives you a baseline of judging how well this first date went and if you wanna see this person again. Another thing you might be evaluating after the date is the spark or the potential chemistry you had with the person. Now, when it comes to the spark, I would actually recommend ditching the spark. Now, this is, comes against all the popular belief that we hear about in movies or the people we know that are in relationships. 
But the reason you wanna ditch the spark is that people are so often quick to cut someone off because they don't feel an immediate intense chemistry with someone. But I would be very wary of the people you feel intense chemistry with right away. Oftentimes the best relationships are ones that are slow burners and you do not see that immediately after the first date. This leads immediately into my other rule which is to always go for the second date. Now this is another term coined by Logan Yuri, where she recommends people to always go for the second date. And the reasoning being is that for a lot of people, first dates can be really awkward and can be really nerve wracking. But when you choose to say yes to go for a second date, you allow that person to showcase who they are a little bit more. And both people tend to have a little bit more familiarity with each other and a bit more comfort level. So for me, if the first date wasn't a complete disaster, I usually ask the person if they'd be willing to see each other again. And for me, second dates are a great opportunity to go for an activity date. So an activity date can be anything such as mini golf, ax throwing, top golf, going for a walk in the park. As I mentioned before, I've been on the dating apps for over a year now in the search for a long-term partner. I've been on dates that have been complete duds, but I've also had the chance to build some pretty good connections with people throughout this process. And I know how defeating and how draining this whole world of online dating can be, but I personally found that through these tips that I've laid out in this video, it's actually made the process slightly more enjoyable. So I hope the tips and processes I laid out for you can help you in your search for finding your long-term partner. With love and respect, Yush.